Hello, fellow Earthlings. I just had a bunch of cheese, and it was very delicious, but I'm a little bubbly now, I think. <laughs> anyway, I'm Will House, and I have more records to talk about today. Um, firstly, we're, we're just going to go right in. Yeah, we're going to dive right <laughs> into this. Firstly, James Brown. There it is. This is a, a repressing from Italy a few years ago. Um, plain old black vinyl. Uh, super great record, though. This one has Talking Loud and Saying Nothing. First track on the second side. So, yeah, when I when I saw it at the Half Price Books, I was like, yeah, I'm buying that. Since Talking Loud, Saying Nothing's on there. Um, also, King Heroin is one of James Brown's... I don't know if that's famous or infamous. Whatever, but it's a cool song. But uh, what I really like, I'm a greedy man, part one and part two. That was one I was not familiar with before I listened to this record, and I dig it. I dig it the most. Um, Next up, I was listening to the vinyl community of Gunkles the other day, and they were talking about Neil Young, and I've had this record forever. Um, everybody knows this is Nowhere, one of his early solo records with Crazy I think this one is his first one with Crazy Horse. But anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> it used to be owned by somebody named Jim, it says. Uh, but yeah, I, I thrifted this record in like 1995 or something like that. And I've had it forever. And um, in particular, uh, Cinnamon Girl sounds so amazingly good. The production on this record is just... Yeah, it's kind of second to none. They did a... a positively superb job of making just a, a killer sounding record uh, but anyway got a puppy dog on it i love records with puppy dogs <laughs> and next up this thing is so skinny and so flappity flappity xtc's mummer um mummers are uh, weird like uh kind of dancer like a what is it like a parochial holiday of some sort uh, i don't know some some portion of england has some community that dresses up with these weird pointy hats and stuff and they like go walking and dancing through the streets like once i don't know weird folk weirdness but anyway that's just the name of the album um i'm a really big xtc fan um, since like 89 when they released um, Oranges and Lemons, my brother was like, hey, there's this band XTC and they have this cool record and I loved the uh, cover design on that one. And so, yeah, then I got into XTC through Oranges and Lemons, and then I got Skylarking and then the stuff like Nonesuch that came after that. Um, yeah, it's such an amazing band. Like, if there's anybody like after the Beatles who could like be inheritors of like their style of sonic excellence and sonic experimentation. XTC is one of them but uh, this record I'm not very familiar with so I'm giving it another spin. And after that we have X legendary punk band from Los Angeles. This one is more fun in the new world. And um, yeah I mean you don't really call these guys pop punk but it is poppy, dancey, punky goodness. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've never really listened to an awful lot of X, but I was able to get, I think my partner was, like, had this, like, sitting in, in like, their stack of records, and I was like, oh, you know, I've never listened to that, to that much X. And I played it a few times now, and it is a truly great record. So, yeah, X, more fun in the new world. Definitely one to pick up. If you can. Great band. Great record. Um, doo -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo. Pet Shop Boys Disco. This one was uh, another thrift shop find of mine from I don't even know how many years ago. But it's uh, Pet Shop Boys. What is it? Boo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. I'm trying to think of what songs on here are the ones that I really like. Oh, it's got West End Girls. So, yeah, back in the day, that was a huge hit when I was a, a, a kid. And yeah, man, Western Girls. Good song, good band. After that, sticking around. Oh, I think we've got a theme of uh, Englishness here today. But uh, David Bowie's Lodger, third in the Berlin tri Trilogy. This one's on RCA, old black vinyl. 
Um, I think. Yeah, I was talking about this in my uh, vinyl tag last year, and I was mentioning uh, songs on the first side that I really like because I really like a whole bunch of these. But it's the second side that is the one that has all the tracks that everybody else loves. Uh, it starts out with DJ, which is, of course, a killer song. And then you got Look Back in Anger. And, oh, Boys Keep Swinging is one of the best Bowie songs there is. Um, yeah. Just such a great record. Berlin Trilogy, man. I can really just sort of never get enough of these discs. Like They're just like that deep. They've got all the songs to lure you in and then all of the depth to keep you there. And, uh, oh, such good times. Next up, Soundproof, The Sound of Tomorrow, Today. Um, this, I believe, is Ferrante and Tyker. Boop -a -doop -a -doop. Yeah, Ferrante and Tyker, they were like a pair of pianists back in the 50s, 60s. Um, they did, I wouldn't really call, the, call this stuff Exotica so much, but yeah, kind of dorky, interesting sort of orchestral arrangements of sometimes popular songs, sometimes um, just uh, you know, popular motifs, interestingness. Of course, I bought this one because the cover is so thoroughly cool. It looks uh, very much, yeah, I think this is a, a, a screen cap, if you will, is still from the movie Forbidden Planet, which is one of my favorite films of all time. And uh, yeah, there they are. Ferrante and Tiker, soundproof, the sound of tomorrow, today. Well, here, here we go. The first song on this album is called Peg Leg Marenga. So, yeah, that gives you a little bit of, oh yeah. First song is Peg Leg Marenga. The last song is La Cucaracha. They've got the Mexican hat dance and Tico Tico on there. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah, I bought this one thrifted or wherever it was. I don't remember where I got it. At, but um, I just started playing it like a year or two ago. And I like it a lot more than I ever thought it would. I, it was like a dorky music by it. I just thought it would be fun to hit that. And then it turned out to be great. Next up, Tom Waits, The Heart of Saturday Night. This is an old pressing. I've had this day for a long time. Um, Asylum Records. And this is the one that has Shiver Me Timbers on it, isn't it? Yeah, Shiver Me Timbers, such a great Tom Waits song, and Diamonds on My Windshield is super great as well. <sighs> yeah, good times. I used to have a t-shirt that had this photo, like, printed in the middle of it. I had a buddy of mine ran a, a little shop. Uh, it was like kind of a side hustle or something, making t-shirts with heat transfers, so I... I Gave him a file, and he printed it on a shirt for me. Yeah, it was great. Anyway, Isaac Hayes, Juicy Fruit, Disco Freak. I found this one yeah, maybe a year or so ago. Um, and I had to buy it, but well, because it's got a, a great 70s Ike kind of cover. And, uh, <laughs> yes, great 70s Ike kind of cover. But um, otherwise, uh, I was like, oh, man. Once I saw that his head, his face is there, I was like, yeah, I got to get a copy of this. Um, I don't like it as much as his 60s stuff, early 70s stuff, but it's still Isaac Hayes, and he kind of could do almost no wrong. Like, sometimes he was a little self-indulgent, but all of his stuff is so well thought out. Such a, just, like, naturally gifted musician and songwriter. Uh, yeah, Isaac Hayes was awesome. Orchestrator, everything. Next up. Bongos. I think it's just called bongos, but for all practical intents and purposes, with this cover, it is bongos, 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 bongos. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. On command records, it's bongos. Uh, bongo heavy, instrumental, uh, small group. Uh, I don't know. It's like eight or ten musicians. So not a huge orchestra, not a big band. Um, jazzy stuff. I can't even remember what year this is from. But, uh, yeah, I picked this up, and uh, it's one of these early stereo records that sounds completely amazing. Like, the folks who started stereo recording just, uh, they, they spent all their time making, it, like, natural sounds. Like, they got the great microphones, they got the great amplifiers, 
they came up with just like super simple studio spaces so um yeah it's like you're you're in there it's like you just hear what the room sounded like when they recorded it and everybody was so professional about it so it was it's super quiet and it's just room ambiance and cool instrumentation on a cleverly arranged record and it's all bongos too so you play this thing and uh it's a little bit of a you get a bit of a beatnik vibes you can just sit there <laughs> and very diggable. It's a fun record. Uh, this one I had uh, pulled last year for the experimental vinyl tag, but I never did the video. So, Soshimoki. Uh, this one is called Temple of the New Sun. Yeah, it's. Uh, these were all recorded in the 80s, but uh, they weren't really compiled until I think the 90s or something like that. It's like the stuff that these guys would have put on cassettes back in the day and sold them individually. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a bunch of the stuff that they did. It's uh, two guys, one of whom is uh, like a European descended musicologist, and the other guy is a uh, Central American descended musician. And then yeah, they get together and they, they do cool stuff that uh, is inspired and uh, is supposed to evoke. Uh, like Mesoamerican pre-Columbian vibes. And do it really well. They used the kind of that instru instrumentation. Um, they experimented with making their own instruments uh, according to archaeological evidence and anecdotal evidence. And uh, yeah, one thing you have to remember about uh, Central and South America is that, like the Mayans. Like everybody says, like the Mayan Empire the civilization has been gone for centuries. But there are still literally millions of Mayan people living all around the Americas. Um, the culture's, yeah, still alive and still relevant. The language is still around, and uh, yeah, that's a it's a cool disc. I'm glad I got that. After that, got a, a, a relatively original with the uh, lenticular goodness here. There's Satanic Majesty's request. Stereophonic London Records. Um, I'm not a huge uh, Rolling Stones fan. I'm definitely more of a Beatles a liker, but uh, this is just such a great psychedelic record. Uh, it's, it's like Brian Jones. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. And somebody pointed out to me uh, that song "Two Thousand Miles from Home." Wasn't it? No, Two Thousand Light Years. Yeah, Two Thousand Light Years from Home. And, uh, of course, it's got She's a Rainbow on there, which is one of the Stones' absolute best songs, bar none. And, yeah, it's like this is... It's basically... Yeah, it's basically what it looks like there. It's, it's psychedelic, but there's also, like, a wizardly kind of vibe there. It's uh, like psychedelic medieval something. I love that record. It's so good. The Go-Go's Beauty and the Beat. I've had such a beastly time trying to realize, like, figure out uh, which version of this record I have. I know it's got, like, the no more peachy colored uh, sleeve, the dust jacket, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's not easy when you, you got Beauty and the Beat in an old pressing to realize which one it is sometimes, because there's, like, 10 or 12 different really common pressings of it, but it's an amazing record. Um, it's got... Oh, Our Lips Are Sealed, which is written by the Go-Go's, as well as Terry from the Specials. Like, uh, I didn't realize that he got around so much, but, yeah, he wrote a song with the Go-Go's, and he wrote a song with Talking Heads, and uh, he has such an excellent, excellent record. Um, Can't Stop the World is another spectacular song on there. And, of course, we got the beat as... Amazing stuff. <laughs> After that, we've got Way's Blood, or is it Wise Blood? I think it's Way's Blood, but uh, the deal with uh, this gal is that she's young as heck, um, but she's such a vastly talented singer. Her voice is just amazing. And uh, yeah, she, I, I think she writes most of her stuff, and it's all interesting and like 
this one, it, the cover is literally her submerged in a room in water. So, yeah, underwater record, I guess I will call it, with a super fantastic singer. And lastly, the best of Martin Denny. This is my dad's old copy of the record. Um, this is definite exotica going on here. Um, Martin Denny's band started out playing at uh, like tiki restaurants in Hawaii. Like you'd go there and you'd like get your, <laughs> your weird fruity drinks and you'd sit there and have your weird tiki culture meal, whatever. And listen to Martin Denny's band play live. Uh, yeah, apparently that was that was an actual thing. Um, Liberty Records. This is another one of those discs that uh, sounds really great early stereo. Uh, but yeah, it's a collection of uh, songs from his popular selling records. And there you go. If you want to talk some cultural appropriation, Martin Denny is the guy. But. Uh, also, he was just a really great musician and a really good uh, songwriter, orchestrator. And he actually hired non-white people. Like, people of color were in Martin Denny's band almost always. So, as appropriative culturally as Martin Denny is, there's, it's not quite so bad as people have always said, even though it's kind of as bad as people have always said. Um, like, I... Uh, listened to his old record Aphrodisia, which is his African-inspired record the other week. And that's the one I have the most history with, and I totally love it, quite frankly. But, wow, yeah. The vibes it's putting on, out are really, really racist at some times. Um, anyway, that's all I got for uh, records that I'm taking to work for the next couple of days. So, be well, everybody. Peace out, my fellow Earthlings, and we'll see you in the next one. Whenever that may be, hopefully it won't be another month or something. So, Take care, y'all.